So on to some of the developmental changes in adolescence. We will first discuss the physical and cognitive changes that take place. We start with the hormonal changes that are seen in puberty. Uh, with boys, this is the increase in production of the androgens, and most specifically testosterone and estrogens in, the, in females. Uh, boys and girls will experience a growth spurt, um, uh, another rapid period of uh, physical development, changes in height and weight and body structure. Uh, boys start this uh, development a little bit later, around the age of 12, 12 and a half. Uh, this, there's great variability here, as with girls, who will start their, their growth spurt around the age of 10, but again, there's great variability. Uh, girls will see an increase in production or an increase in body fat percentage, and their hips broaden, their breasts develop. Uh, boys also get taller, their shoulders broaden, their legs get longer, uh, and they gain quite a bit of muscle mass and efficiency there, physical. Um, the primary sexual characteristics are those that have to do with reproduction. Uh, so the uh, females will begin releasing eggs and begin menstruation. Uh, boys begin sperm development and will experience their first ejaculation. The secondary sexual characteristics are those that are a little bit more overtly visible. Breast development, facial hair, vocal changes, axillary hair, underarm hair, pubic hair, things like that. Uh, the brain is developing pretty dramatically, uh, and we've seen this more clearly with the advances in um, brain imaging and uh, studying of the brain. We've known for a very long time that there are some of these changes that take place in adolescent brain development, um, and that uh, thinking and planning gets more sophisticated as the adolescent moves out of adolescence and into early adulthood. Um, the prefrontal cortex, again, that, that front part of the brain is developing. It's sort of finishing up its development. Um, and we see an increased ability to self-regulate and plan and pay attention. But again, this is a, something that occurs over a number of years. It's a, a process, not a sort of switching on and off. Um, we see uh, uh, we also know that the limbic system is developing and, and maturing uh, and with this we see um, the, the limbic system is involved in emotional regulation and processing uh, and this is believed to be uh, sort of the explanation for some of um, adolescence are kind of erratic moods and behaviors that can occur more so than kind of the traditional uh, view that this is caused by hormones and hormonal changes in adolescence. Sleep changes dramatically, sleep habits. Uh, we know this, we see this across cultures and across time that uh, adolescent sleep occurs later at night and later into the day. Uh, this can be a, a great concern for uh, parents and caregivers of adolescents as reduced sleep, just like with any other age group, can cause uh, changes in mood and difficulty concentrating and things like that. Um, I would be really interested to see what you guys have to say in the discussion if you'd like to talk about sleep habits and adole in adolescence and how that may be affected by the current coronavirus crisis. Uh, myself, personally, I have a 13, almost 14 year old at home and her uh, homeroom class does not start till 945 and that's a virtual class. Uh, her first period class begins about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so I'd love to hear what you guys think about that, how you would have responded, 
if you were in your early adolescence during this time with that kind of start time, as, as many of you may know, traditional start times for middle school and high schools are much, much earlier than that. Uh, there is seen some increase in conflict during the adolescent years. In general, most of this is mild. Uh, it is believed to have uh, an adaptive view that children are developing their own identities and needing to separate um, gradually from parents and that this sort of begins in adolescence. Uh, when puberty occurs, uh, typically has a, a differing effect on boys versus girls. Uh, early mature, maturing girls, girls who experience uh, their first menstrual period and other uh, changes of uh, puberty early, uh, tend to have uh, difficulties with body image. They in general are considered to be at risk of more uh, behavioral problems, whereas late maturing girls tend to uh, have a more positive body image. It sort of gives them a little bit of a, um, sort of a, a respite period between childhood and some of the um, problems associated with being a young female. Uh, boys who mature early uh, tend to be to, to have an easier time as far as popularity and self-confidence. Uh, however, they can experience some of the difficulties that can be associated with appearing older, uh, as can happen with girls who mature early, uh, than they actually biologically are. Uh, and boys who are late maturing tend to experience some more anxiety and body image issues. Again, these are great general, general generalities, <laughs> um, sort of general statements. And again, I'd be interested to hear your opinions of this and your thoughts on this uh, based on some of the readings that you've done um, on these consequences of timing. Uh, eating disorders can occur in adolescence. They certainly can also occur in adulthood. Uh, anorexia and bulimia are the two uh, sort of primary eating disorders that it can occur. Uh, anorexia nervosa is an extremely serious and can be fatal psychological disorder. Uh, individuals, most typically girls, will focus a lot on um, their weight and what they consume, what they put in their body. Uh, it is um, almost always seen w with a dramatic decrease in body fat and in body weight uh, down to very dangerous levels. Um, and again, this can be a potentially fatal psychological disorder. Uh, they, individuals can experience heart difficulties uh, because of electrolyte imbalances and they can experience heart damage. Uh, it can, is typically a difficult disorder to treat. It requires uh, good, solid, long-term treatment and extensive treatment, family therapy, individual therapy, things like that. Uh, bulimia can also be seen. Again, it is more commonly seen in young women. Um, although it, both of these disorders have been seen increasingly in males. And again, that's something I'd be interested to hear from any of you in the discussion section. Uh, bulimia traditionally involves eating an enormous amount of calories at one time and then uh, removing those, uh, th those calories or that, that food either through purging, um, physically inducing vomiting, uh, sometimes alternating with starvation so they won't eat for you know a few days at a time and then eat a, an enormous amount. Um, the laxative abuse is also uh, commonly used to get rid of excess calories or to, they believe that it'll get rid of the excess weight.
Uh, sexual activity is also another concern of adolescents, as you can see from this study from several years ago. By 12th grade, over half of males and females have reported uh, engaging in sexual intercourse. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is contraceptive use, and obviously with that uh, teenage pregnancy and STD rates, um, at least 20% of sexually active teenagers do not consistently use contraception. Uh, and again, this can lead to um, uh, sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. Some of the reasons given that teens don't use contraception is that they don't feel that they are educated about it. Um, they are unrealistic about the consequences of their sexual activity. Um, and some of them are exploited through um, you know, sexual trafficking and things like that. Obviously, you would not see um, consistent contraception contraceptive use in abusive situations such as that. Um, what are some of the other reasons that you believe that teenagers don't use contraceptive? So in addition to teenage pregnancy, uh, STD rates are you know, a big concern in adolescence and even at, of course in adulthood at all ages. Um, so education is really one of the most important tools to uh, decrease STD rates in all age groups. Um, obviously AIDS is the most serious of concerns uh, as far as the STDs because it, it is still potentially a fatal sexually transmitted disease. Um, individuals can be affected uh, or infected right. at any point in time. Um, without testing, individuals may not realize that they are infected and may pass on any of these STDs uh, to other partners. Uh, HPV, human papillomavirus, is also a um, highly uh, transmitted sexually uh, transmitted disease or highly infectious sexually transmitted disease. Uh, and there, one of the consequences of HPV later on in life can be uh, cancers cancers of the cervix, um, in particular in females. And so there is now a vaccination for HPV that uh, children get very late in adolescence. Uh, I'm sorry, late in childhood, early adolescence uh, to decrease that uh, particular uh, consequence. However, the, really the most important thing is increasing uh, contraceptive use, particularly condom use, for all ages to decrease sexual transmission. Teen pregnancy rates um, are, are still a concern in the United States. Uh, some of the prevention strategies, again, education is really key, giving adolescents the tools to how to handle these um, situations, things like role-playing exercises, um, information and access to contraceptives. Many schools now have health clinics for students uh, in the school uh, that might offer education and access to contraceptives. Um, so healthcare and education are really very important tools to reduce teen pregnancy rates. Substance abuse is another concern in adolescents. Um, about a quarter of teenagers have reported using highly addictive drugs or heavy, uh, engaging in heavy drinking. Uh, the consequences of this are pretty clear, pretty evident. Uh, overdose deaths, um, alcohol poisoning deaths, and some of the other uh, dangers that come with being under the influence of addictive and mind-altering substances. And again, here, this is where we see education, teaching students, uh, teaching adolescents the tools to res resist peer pressure, uh, engage in other activities, um, you know, to sort of reduce the time that they have to engage in some of these dangerous 
behaviors and if necessary family and individual therapy group therapy things like that can also be utilized so on to cognitive development uh, teens have moved into Piaget's formal operational stage they are able to think logically and to uh, test theories um, think hypothetically, what if, what if this, what if that. Uh, so their thinking, their cognitive abilities uh, increase in sophistication. They also make gains in information processing. They're better able to pay attention. Their inhibition increases, so their ability to say, no, I'm not going to pay attention to this, I'm going to focus on this. Um, their metacognition, thinking about thinking. Um, I, this is how it, you know, they start to identify how they best learn and use those pro practices to better improve their uh, learning outcomes and their, um, their thinking speed increases. Um, because of some of these cognitive changes and again the increase in activity in the limbic system, Adolescents can become more self-conscious and focus on themselves more. Uh, there's this idea of the imaginary audience, and I always use myself as an example. Um, I remember being at some point of my adolescence and um, staring at my closet and thinking, well, I wore red yesterday, so I can't wear red this week, and I wore stripes on Tuesday, so I can't wear any more stripes this week. You know, really just imagining that everyone was focusing it as much as I was on the, the, the attire that I was wearing for the week, uh, when in reality, most of my peers were probably focused mostly, again, on themselves and what they were wearing and worrying about what other people were thinking of them. Decreasing uh, dropout rates, uh, of course, increasing the rates of uh, high school graduation in particular um, is very important at this age. Uh, focusing on the things that keep students in school, um, helping them with areas where they're struggling, making relationships with individual counselors or teachers. We now know from uh, research in other areas of adolescence that that one relationship with a reliable adult um, can be very beneficial to, to teenagers in their development. Okay, so we will move on in the next slideshow to talk about social and emotional changes 